to the Blanchetti House Lunch with the Art series. Today, we'll look at the community services of Professor Joseph Eady. We will talk about the Eady family of North Broward County, the impact of Eady's life on Broward County and the state of Florida, and we will discuss efforts to memorialize his accomplishments. With me today is filmmaker and history advocate, Emmanuel George. We will address many of Professor Ely's successes in central and southern Broward County. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Derek Davis. I'm the curatorial consultant for the Blanche Ely House. Uh, I'm a journalist. I've had more than 25 years of experience in black history in South Florida. I was the curator at the Old Dillard Museum for about 10 years. I was a head of exhibits and program for the African American Research Library and Cultural Center for about nine years. And I've worked with the Black Archives History and Art and History and Research Facility of Miami for about nine years. So I've been in history here for quite some time. Now today, as, as I said, we're going to be talking about Joseph Ely. And one of the things I wanted to show, I said about the community services of Joseph Ely. One of the things I hope I can get on screen, right? We brought it to the screen. There's an old book uh, that's the one of the best books they have on the history of, uh, of Blacks in Broward County. It's done very early. It was done by the Lynx, and it's called Black Pioneers in Broward County, A Legacy Revealed. Now, the reason I mentioned the book, that the book looked at a lot of the Black pioneers of Broward County, and it put them into various sections. It put them into... Uh, community leaders, it put them into political figures, it put them into whole different lots of slots. And one of the slots that it decided to do was where they were going to put Blanche and Joseph Ely. And instead of putting them in education, they actually put them into community services. And they put them in community services because the Ely's had did so many things that were beyond education that they felt that they would be better put in a category of community services rather than just an education. So today, since we're just looking at Joseph Ely, we're gonna be talking about a lot of things that he did for the community. And we're gonna have uh, Emmanuel is gonna tell us a lot about what that meant to uh, South Broward County. Now the Ely family is a North Broward County family. And I say that because his father and mother lived in Deerfield. And his father for a long time was a pastor at one of the Baptist churches in Pompano. Uh, his father, that was from about 1915 to 1918 when he died. And his uh, mother, who was a, the first midwife in uh, the area, in that northern part of Broward County, and she helped to bring forth many of the black children and the white children in that area. So she's real, 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 real known in the North Broward County as being a community leader. And then he had sisters like Bertha Ely, who was uh, one of the principals at Colored School, at uh, the Pompano Beach Colored School, uh, that later became Blanche Ely High School. So the Ely family has a lot of interaction and services that they provided to the community in North Broward County. So J Joseph Ely was like a North Broward County person. But when you look at him, he did a lot of things in other parts of the community. And that's why I wanted to bring in Emmanuel, because I wanted Emmanuel to talk about, you know, we know about some of the things he's done in the, the North Proud of Broward County. We know about the family. We know that he was deeply interested in churches. His father was a minister before him. His father helped to organize a lot of the Baptist churches along the East Coast from uh, Ormond Beach all the way down to Miami. Uh, Joseph Ely was always involved in a lot of the, the Baptist churches conventions, the treasurer, president of a company organizations, as well as being an educator. That's why I say he was very heavy into community services. But I wanted to get Emmanuel to tell us about some of the things that he did uh, in other parts of Broward, basically Central and, and uh, Central and South Broward. So Emmanuel, some, what are some things you can tell us about Joseph Ely? All right, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Davis, for having me on this platform. Um, I'm 31 years old, and uh, I talked to a lot of uh, elders in the community in the South Broward, uh, historic four pillars of South Broward. And mm -hmm. Mr. Ely was the first principal at Dillard from 1924 to 1930. And then he went to Attics from 1930 to 
from the, and he was the principal there from 1930 to 1963. And Attucks was a historic black high school, akin to what Dillard was to Central Broward or what uh, Blanche Ely High School was to North Broward. And from what people have told me from those who went to Attucks High School, like Rodney Collins, like Garnett Benneby and Hubert Hammer Jackson, and those who was, who was there at the time was that uh, Professor Ely was, was a very straightforward, a very strict man. He didn't really play no games, but he did care about the well-being of the students. And that was his main goal, was for them to make something out of themselves. So Professor Ely was the, 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 the epicenter. He was the, the glue that brought together the four pillars of South Broward. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and, and you mentioned that he was at Ely, and I know a lot of people say it as he was the first principal at uh, Dillard High School. Uh, I know for some of the people at Dillard, I just want to correct, make sure they understand it correctly. He was the first principal at that building that became Dillard High School. But when you look at Port Lauderdale Colored School, we know that that goes all the way back to 1907, and that there were other principals who were a part of that uh, Port Lauderdale Colored School uh, or color school number 11 before Mr. Ely. But when they got that building on 4th Street and 10th Avenue, um, Mr. Ely was that first principal at that building and then uh, was there between 1924 and 1930 before he went to uh, Attucks. And just want to make sure for, you know, because I know we say he's the first, but it's with the, the building. And I know a lot of people in Fort Lauderdale, if you don't mention the fact, that there were other principals uh, that were there in Fort Lauderdale before Professor Ely, that they will be all over us. I just want to clarify that. When we're saying the first principal at Dillard, we're talking about he was the first principal to go into that new building. Now, are there other things that you can tell us about some things he was involved in? Because I know uh, Professor Ely uh, was in more than just education uh, in the things he did. Now, in the South Broward, because I know one of the things that we talked about with Professor Ely that he started the first Boy Scout troop for Blacks. Was there any involvement, or did you talk to anyone about some of his involvement in organizations like the Boy Scouts or other things that he was involved in? Um, so from, from the, those that went to Attucks High School, I always mm -hmm. tend to just mention them first since yes. I, we didn't go there. But okay. um, from what they told me was that uh, he did have a, um, a historical foundation as well there. Okay. Um, at that time, there is a plaque it's actually in the Blanche Ely House uh, plaque that says Joseph Algernon Historical Society and has the, the eagle, the Attic's eagle on there. He was also, um, again, according to, uh, to Garnett Benneby, uh, who's a, one of the main historians in Liberia, he is the main historian in Liberia. Mm -hmm. is that, um, Professor Ely was very instrumental in the, 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 the phone booths that are in the, on the highways. Um, in the state of Florida, because at the time, a lot of black people sometimes, you know, it was dangerous driving in certain areas. And if your car broke down, that might have cost you your life. So he was very, so he was the one that spearheaded and brought that to light as well. And he was also the, the first black probation officer as well. Mm -hmm. And he was also the first black person to serve on an all white jury duty as well. So those are just some uh, more uh, tidbits about Professor Ely and things he's contributed to. He's also a Morehouse man. Yes, and yes. Also the, uh, the reason why Attucks had the, has the colors of the, the, mar the maroon and white is because of the, the Morehouse co um, connection. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned it, and, and maybe it went too, uh, I'm trying to make sure it's not going too fast. You mentioned that he had historical records that are still at Attucks. Uh, can you tell us about how much that is? Because we, we, we've had some, the, one thing about Joseph Ely is that there are not many pictures of him anywhere. Uh, and all the things we've looked at, there's only a few pictures that we have found of Joseph Ely. But to find out his writings, you know, some of his writings that we've even found at the Ely House are very significant. You mentioned some of them that he wrote to the state of Florida, asking them to put some uh, telephones along the uh, turnpike. So when people, or it had accidents along the turnpike that they could have a, a place that they could call to get help from the turnpike. And, and you know, for many people, when they look at a turnpike now, they say, oh, why would you need that? Uh, 
and it's, it's a convenience now, but back then it was a necessity because I remember when I was a little kid, talking about getting on the turnpike to go somewhere, we got on in Miami and the first place you could get off was Pompano. I mean, it was like a straight shot from Miami all the way to Pompano. There was nothing but cows. Most of, you know, we were little kids and you sit up there and you'd be so bored because you'd be riding along on this expressway and there would be nothing. And I mean, nothing along the sides of expressway. And so you'd be just driving, driving, driving. And it used to be a time when that, it was a, of a service plaza at Pompano. And it had, at that time, the state had these orange balls at each one of the service plazas. And these orange balls, uh, and I mean, they were big orange balls. There was some places like it's supposed to be the Sunshine State with the oranges. Uh, and they usually also have this fresh orange juice at those centers. And you would be waiting to see that orange bowl, ball, ball, ball there because you know you were close to actually getting to the exit. So when it says that he put phones along that, you know, we don't think about today when you got, you know, exits all along the way, but think about during a time when the exits were very, very far apart. And, and, and another thing he did, as far as some of the letters we have at the Ely House, is he actually asked the, the Florida, uh, Florida uh, Highway Patrol, uh, we asked the Florida Highway Patrol to actually get some black officers. Uh, to get black patrolmen. So there are a lot of great letters uh, for, for him, but I said, but not many pictures um, of him doing things. But we even need to get more of his writings. And, and I, question really start off, can you tell us about some of the things, have you seen some of the things that he has in his historical documents that are at Attics? Well, um, yes, well, Attics now sadly is a middle school um, after 1968. Uh, it became um, a middle school and that was one of the tragic moments in South Broward's black history because that really broke up a lot of things and broke up uh, the, the four pillars because mm -hmm. Attics was, you know, you were in, in, in Carver, if you were in Carver Ranches, the Northwest section of Hallandale, if you were in Liberia, if you were in Daney, which is what we call the Northwest side of Dania Beach, or even part of Oges in Aventura, or certain parts of Davy, um, you were going to Attics. And when Attics became a middle school, it broke a lot of things up. And in terms of the, the, the documents, things that's there, um, it actually um, just, it kind of like didn't really intend to happen. Uh, there was um, um, an employee that works at Attics Middle School and he was, he went to Attics High School back in the day, mm -hmm. he was an employee there. And he was um, in one of the, like the storage areas and he ended up finding a lot of artifacts of addicts when it was a high school in the storage. And this is stuff that was just like, like dusted and a lot of it was eroded and things like that. And he was very upset about it. And that's when, you know, they carved off a little area when you enter addicts middle school that has like a lot of the memorabilia like, like the bat, like, like the old basketball they used pictures of the, 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 the football team and the, the women's cheerleading team and the women's basketball team um, and things of that nature, trophies that um, Addicts High School have won. So there is some things there and there's actually still more that needs to be revealed. And that's why like, I'm doing as much as I can to, to preserve South Broward's black history and Addicts is what um, is like the, um, the, 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 the spine, I would say of our black history so um yeah that's how so it, it kind of just happened you know it wasn't like something like it was just intended to it was just this man was working and he was in the the storage and then he just let's say he just opened up a box and seen all this so i could only imagine how he felt and but, but, tell us, but, but tell us a little more about your ideas on how you can preserve and honor mr ely uh in south Broward. Well, one of the one of the things I've been um, spearheading um, is to have the J. A. Ely Historical Museum and Resource Hub, which will be the first Black History Museum in South Broward. This museum would have a room dedicated to Professor Ely. Mm -hmm. It would also have a room dedicated to Attics High School when it was a high school. Mm -hmm. It would also have a room dedicated to Liberia, which is where Attics is in. A room dedicated to Daney, which is um, where J. A. Ely Boulevard is, because. The, there's a political border that separates Liberia and Dania. And it's J. A. Ely Boulevard, North 22nd Ave. It's a two-lane street that splits the community up. A room dedicated to Carver Ranches, a room dedicated to Hallandale, as well as a resource hub where people can learn 
um, tangible skill sets from coding, tech, theme, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, as well as an art gallery for artists to showcase their, their talent. And this also would be um, part of the cultural tourism economy in Broward County because Pompano, um, in Pompano, y'all have the Blanche Ely Museum, which is phenomenal. Y'all have the Ally Cultural Center, that's phenomenal. Fort Lauderdale has Old Dillard Museum, that's phenomenal. They also have the African American Research Library, that's phenomenal. South Broward doesn't have anything. And we have his four historic black communities. So mm -hmm. the museum is a way to preserve local black history. It's a way for community development by having a resource hub. And it's a way for the cultural tourism economy, which can drive economic growth in the community. Okay. So that's the, what I'm working on um, right now. And I've been working on that for about two years. Can you tell us a little bit more about those cities? I know a lot of people have heard of Dania, and they can hear some little backstories of uh, uh, Dania that was one of the early cities. I think it was the first incorporated city of some other yes. things. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more about all the cities? Because I think we kind of hear the names. We hear you say Liberia. We hear you say Carver Ranches. Uh, can you tell us a little more about all four of them? And Ogis, which is, as I understand now, is no longer a part of Broward County. Yes. Um, well, I, I could gladly tell you about that. Dania Beach um, is the first incorporated city in Broward County. And Dania, which is what, what we call the, 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 the historical Black section of Dania Beach, is the first incorporated Black community in Broward Co County, of course. Mm -hmm. And that is a community that has a lot of rich history. You have the Collins family that came there. And um, Collins Elementary is named after Leola Collins. Richard Collins was a, a phenomenal big time entrepreneur who had property from Miami um, throughout Dania Beach. And there was even um, from an a, a interview, um, he passed away actually a few years ago. Um, There's an interview with Dr. Killy, with, with Dr. Kitty Oliver, uh, mm -hmm. with him and his son, Rich uh, Rodney Collins. Uh, mm -hmm. This was in the early 2000s where he was even talking about he owned the, the land, the property where South Broward High School is. Mm -hmm. um, so um, he was a phenomenal entrepreneur. The Isidore Mizell was from Dania Beach, which is where we know Von D. Mizell and all the other Mizells that have made a lot of great work throughout Broward County. Now you have Liberia, which is uh, the black section of Hollywood. And that's a historic area as well, because home of addicts. And then you also had the likes of the Paradise Club, which is really on the Dania Beach side, but it was really significant to Liberia. Uh, the Paradise Club was where Cannonball Adderley performed at, James Brown performed at, Aretha Franklin performed at, James Brown auntie stayed on Cody Street in Liberia. So mm -hmm. James Brown has actual blood family that's still in Liberia to this day. And then you have Hallandale. Now Hallandale was very known because it was one of like the entertainment capitals in Broward County. Hallandale had the Palms nightclub where Sam Cooke and James Brown and Jackie Wilson and uh, Marvin Gaye, I mean, you name it. Jackie Wilson had a song called Doggin' Around. And that song came about from Hallandale because there was a woman he was trying to talk to and she had a boyfriend and she wasn't giving him the time of day. And that's what made the song Doggin' Around. Now that comes from Hubert Hammer Jackson, who is from Hallandale and is writing a book about Black Hallandale. So he told me that story as well as there was one of the dancers um, in, um, that used to be with James Brown and, he, and James Brown recruited him from Hallandale. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so there's a lot of interesting stories about the Palms nightclub. It was part of the Chitlin circuit and we talk about Overtown and Overtown having the, the entertainers, but for Broward, the Palms nightclub was, was that for mm -hmm. us and where it sits now is seven homes. So that, that lets you know how big of a club that this was. And now you have Carver Ranches, which is, the youngest of the historic black communities um, incorporated in 1941, 1942, according to Cynthia Strawn from the Bold Strawn House. And um, so Carver Ranches came to be when it was uh, two white men and they were, they had this land and they were selling it exclusively just to black people. And that's where Carver Ranches came to be and Pembroke Road was its black business district. And then I, and then we were talking about Oges and Oges was basically where Aventura was. And Oges was an area where black people lived in as well. You have a lot of rich history that uh, needs to be, be preserved and, and bought up again. Cause I, I, I've heard of these places, but even you are giving us more, more in, in depth look 
into some of these places that we really, really need to 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 preserve. And and I, and and, and it, you mentioned uh, uh, J. A. Ely's uh, book Street that's there. Now, do you incorporate? You want to try to incorporate the street in some of the things you want to preserve, or how do you want to use the oh, J. A. Ely Street? I would love the museum to be on J. A. Ely Boulevard, just like kind of like how. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, Blanche Ely Museum is on Blanche Ely, um, the street, if I'm not mistaken. So um, I would like something like that, because it's just a way to connect both areas. You know, we, um, from what I see that Broward County's Black history, there's a connection from Deerfield all the way to Hallandale. People from Deerfield were going, were going down to Hallandale to the Palms. People from the Palms were going to Deerfield to the Diamond Club. You had the schools playing against each other. You had uh, Blanche Ely High School versus Addicts was one of the biggest rivalries. Mm -hmm. And one of the, and from what um, students told me, uh, who went to uh, Addicts? Uh, we also had Cyril Pender who played for the uh, Chicago Bears and uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. He was the star athlete at Addicts. There were stories about he would be he would be playing fo the, the the football game, and then halftime he would. He would go in and change his clothes and then perform in the band. And then after the performance, he would change back and hop back on the field. Wow. And um, he, so there was stories about Professor Ely. He would tell the students to take it a little bit, take it easy on, um, on Blanche Ely High School when they play because, you know, he didn't want to hear it from his wife later. And an interesting thing to note is that Blanche Ely was like the, the matriarch of the family at the time, which was very interesting that she was, such a such a strong figure. So there's a big connection between South Central and North Broward. And for me, preserving South Broward's Black history will connect the dots for all of Broward County's Black history. Yes, yeah. and and you're right. There are so many dots that we need to 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 make connection. Uh, because I don't know if you know, but uh, the Ely family were also a part of the efforts to get Florida Memorial College. Uh, that they were from Live Oak. And in Live Oak, uh, the Baptist Church started a college. Um, and then they, they started in Live Oak and their father was a part of getting a, the, a college in, in Live Oak, a Baptist college in Live Oak. They moved to Jacksonville and it was split. He started a uh, part of a college in, in Live Oak. Later, those two colleges came together and eventually they named themselves uh, in Jacksonville, they named uh, in the St. Augustine area, they named themselves Florida Memorial College. And it, that college later left St. Augustine as it moved around to several places and is now sitting right across the uh, Broward Dade line here. So Florida Memorial College, it, the, the history of that also links in to uh, the Ely's because that family was a part of actually starting that. So they were, you know, I mentioned that they were a big part of the Baptist churches, but that Baptist church they were part of actually started that college that now is Florida Memorial College. So I think there's a lot of connections that uh, people are not getting. As I said, there were a lot of community services that we get from people like Mr. Uh, uh, or Professor Ely. They would usually always call him Professor Ely uh, mm -hmm. because he was so smart. There are a lot of writings. There are some of his writings that are in some of the uh, the letters that he has at the uh, Ely Museum and letters he wrote to the Pope, to uh, entertainers, to to uh, just, you know, all kind of important letters he wrote. Like we said, the letters he wrote to the Florida Highway Department for the phones and for uh, getting uh, and for getting the, the telephones along the way. He wrote letters to help them to start a uh, a girls uh, facility uh, for delinquent girls. I mean, there's just so many things that they did in the community that goes beyond education that I just think, I, I agree with you, that his name should be memorialized. We should know more about him. We should try to make sure that these connections are talked about more and more. So is it uh, anything else you'd like to say in closing about the Ely and the efforts to try to save him? Yeah, I would like to say, I, I think it's great for us to to work together. And I'm, again, I'm thankful for being on this platform. And um, I think it's great. It would be very great for us to work together, um, you know, with the, the Blanche Ely House, uh, myself, um, also the the cultural division, Brown County Cultural Division is behind me on this, the J.A. Ely 
historical museum and resource hub. So I think it will be great for right now. Well, not, I don't mean like literally right now, but um, just now to, uh, to work together and start, um, you know, going through some of the, 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 the professor, professor Eloise archives in Blanche Ely Museum and figuring out um, answers so that this can be archived in bringing forth the J.A. Ely Historical Museum. Because I say this because Attucks High School last graduation class was 1968, which would mean that the youngest students um, would be 70 years old or approaching 70. So mm -hmm. a lot of the alumni from the Addicts High School Alumni Association is they're getting up there in age and maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now, they won't be here anymore. And when they're not here no more, who is going to be able to, to really tell the story? I mean, I'm 31. I'll, you know, still be here. God forbid something happens. But, um, you know, we need to start now. And that's, to me, like, it's, it's a necessity. Uh, I think we, we, we really need to start and getting to, to work and really preserving this history. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank our audience for joining us today. Again, I'm Derek Davis and we have Emmanuel George. Both of us are, we love black history and love to, to share these moments with you. And today we were sharing to you, with you about Joseph Ely and how much he did as an educator and a community advocate.